you know, in 2022, the view that I'm looking at was controlled by Russia. Uh, Russia had control of the Black Sea, and now it is dangerous for Russia to have any ships in the sea. Before we continue, we invite you to follow our channel, the only American show reporting live from Ukraine every day. Time to check in with Joseph Lindsley in Ukraine. And Joe, I want to talk first about uh, the Department of Justice targeting Russia over efforts to sway voters here in the United States. And of course, uh, you heard the news now, the effort to push back on Russian influence campaigns in the 2024 election, trying to curb the Kremlin's use of state-run media and fake news sites. And uh, a lot of this misinformation coming from Russia is about the war in Ukraine, isn't it, Joe? Indeed, Bob, and good afternoon from Odessa. I'm talking to you right now. I don't know if you can hear in the back on the shores of the Black Sea. Uh, so perhaps you can hear the waves or the seagulls behind me. Uh, but I, you know, I'm glad you mentioned you know, a lot of this uh, disinformation spreading on falsehoods is about Russia's war on Ukraine because in, in pretty much uh, so far every single major story I've seen about the Department of Justice's allegations against this Russian-funded U.S. media company, none of them, from CNN to BBC to others, none of them mentions Russia's war upon Ukraine, which is astounding because here in Ukraine, I think we see very apparently, you know, like Russia's primary goal right now when it comes to everything, you know, geopolitics is the destruction and conquering of Ukraine. Uh, and so any disinformation that they push is usually somehow tied uh, to that. And amazingly, uh, for example, I'm looking at the CNN story right now, and it's focused on the interference in the U.S. elections, and it makes zero mention whatsoever of Russia's war upon Ukraine. And here I think we see in, in the sort of American public conversation, American media, uh, it's kind of a, we have a myo myopic way of examining uh, these global affairs, and not, you know, and because of that, perhaps not even realizing how much we are being manipulated. In fact, uh, there's a very popular uh, podcaster called Tim Pool, and he, he was mentioned as, as sort of a victim of this uh, Russian operation. Uh, he was working for this Tennessee-based company uh, that was paying lots of money. Uh, for, and it turns out what the FBI, or what the DOJ is alleging is that money came from Russia. And they do say that Tim Pool, you know, did not know, was not aware that he was being, he was a pawn in this game. But, but he's been one of the main voices that Russian money has funded. And, you know, he, more than the U.S. elections, what he often talks about is Russia's war on Ukraine. And he pushes the, 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 the falsehoods, you know, about, I don't even like to repeat the falsehoods because then, you know, they get into the public mind. But he's been one of the main sources, including for people like Elon Musk, who frequently retweets Tim Pool. Uh, Tim Pool has been a major source of, of false information about Ukraine claiming that Ukraine is a country that persecutes Christians. When it's Russia, for example, that's bombing Ukrainian churches. And so it does astound me, and it worries me that in, in no major media article is there not even a single mention of this war. And, you know, it, it, you know a war that it might seem far away to many people, but as I you know, was keenly uh, aware of these past few days with the yesterday's attack upon Lviv, which is just, you know, 80 miles or so from Poland. You know, if you look at a, a map of Europe when there's an air raid along the Ukraine, mo you know, Ukraine is the largest country in Europe. And so a huge portion of Europe is under threat of missile strikes. And the fact that that doesn't even make it into uh, these stories, when, of course, from the Russian standpoint, uh, one, the, the main thing they are pushing is to undermine, uh, undermine support for Ukraine. Yeah, very important that uh, we we bring that to light. Are, are you, uh, don't say, of course, exactly where you are, but are, are you walking around outside at the moment, Joseph? No, I'm on a, I'm on a, a, a terrace here in a little Crimean Tartar cafe. Uh, you know, the exiled people, the Tartar people from the Crimean Peninsula, they have great cuisine. There's a nice cafe here uh, on the beach overlooking the Black Sea. So later, you know, if you go to UkrainianFreedomNews.com, you can see the video uh, of this broadcast, and, and you can see the waters of the Black Sea, and you know, due south, way across the sea, uh, is Turkey. And uh, you know, as I look at this water, first think of ancient history. Uh, the ancient Greeks called this Euhenios Pontos, which meant the hospitable sea. Uh, other cultures called it the inhospitable sea because there are so many shipwrecks underneath here. And the water, you know, I mean, it's it's a proper sea, and there's waves, 
Uh, I can see some people swimming now. They, they've, they've made a safe zone where people can swim. Uh, we don't have to worry about sea mines. But uh, because uh, the, the, the water at the bottom of the sea does not leave the sea, and so there are so many, and it's not much oxygen, so there are so many preserved shipwrecks. Uh, going back to the days of the ancient Greece, Greeks, and in Greek legend, uh, uh, Achilles and Odysseus uh, were on these very shores, on the very beach that I'm looking at now, and that's where the city of Odessa gets its name, from the great uh, Greek legend Odysseus. And as we think of the ancient shipwrecks here, there's also more recent shipwrecks. And, you know, in 2022, the view that I'm looking at was controlled by Russia. Uh, Russia had control of the Black Sea. And now it is dangerous for Russia to have any ships in the sea. Uh, and, and the Russian Black Sea Navy, as we've discussed, uh, is pretty much gone. Uh, in fact, last night, uh, on, on the same sea, but uh, Russia has a coast uh, on the sea to the east at a place called Novorostis. And Ukrainians once again sent sea drones to this Russian port city. And that, this is the city where Russia has moved its navy to protect it. And now Ukrainians are able to reach it even more. And so that, looking at this sea is a sign of what Ukraine has achieved. But uh, while the sea is dangerous for the Russians, the sky above the sea is not. And so that uh, horrific attack upon the center of that the, uh, medieval city of Lviv yesterday, uh, one of the hypersonic missiles was launched from a Russian plane flying over the sea. Uh, so it's, a, it's all, as always, a mixture of, you know, looking at this, I see what Ukraine has achieved, but then also the great, the serious threats that we still face. It's always amazing to me to hear uh, stories of uh, people like you uh, just uh, being in a nice cafe, folks swimming. Uh, I'll let you get back to your uh, your coffee now, uh, Joseph, which, uh, given what you deal with every day in Ukraine, I hope is spiked. You know what I mean? Well, the, uh, I, I think it's a good idea for after this. And the, 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 the leader of the Crimean Tartar people, the, 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 the sort of uh, the king in a way of the Tartars, he promised to make me a proper Crimean coffee uh, after the day of liberation. So, but for now, I'll have a coffee here. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm glad you have moments to enjoy life there at any rate. Thank you, as always, uh, Joseph. Thank you for introducing Ukraine on your social media pages. That's very important that much more people can get more information about the situation here and how everybody can help Ukraine to stay stronger and to save all the world. Значит, ты скоро не... Ебать!